A bunch of tips and ideas for OBS Studio users. That's what the video is going to be about. If you're a brand new OBS user, it's going to help you a lot. And if you're an OBS Studio veteran, there's a lot of things that changed and no one seemed to be talking about. So maybe you'll find out, hey, that thing is new. Anyways, a quick message from our sponsor and then we can begin. And this video is sponsored by Own Pro. Own Pro is known to give you overlays, alerts, widgets, everything you need to start your stream, but they just came up with something pretty awesome. They just dropped a feature that allows your viewers to trigger sound alerts, but also visual alerts that will show up on your screen, not just in OBS, not just on stream, but on your whole monitor. Basically, you want to find this extension on Twitch and the installation is pretty easy. You'll need to connect to your Own Pro account and configure the extension from there. Add a browser source for the sound alerts, then choose if you want sound only or also the visuals. You will need to download and install the software for the visuals. It installed super fast. Now, since it's showing on your screen, if you're not using display capture, you will need to add an additional browser source link so they can see it too. All right, let's add it as a panel. Then pick the effects that you would like to make available to your viewers. You can even preview them. Drag them to extension to add them to the extension. So it'll look like this and drag them to the bottom for channel point rewards and it'll show up here. And if you need any help, check out the quick setup guide. So click the link in the description and set it up for your stream. So here we are in OBS Studio. Don't worry if yours doesn't really look like that. I have the Atom Vertical plugin and I'm also using OBS Live, which is Stream Elements. Anyways, one thing that I want you to use more often is scene collections and profiles. The thing is I see a lot of streamers and content creators basically really, really try their best to fit everything within their scene and it's just not working for them. Some of you have different scenes for different games or for different streams in general. Some of you have different scenes for when you're recording versus when you're streaming and it's all good. The thing is this is gonna be so cluttered that you could easily just go ahead and switch your scene collection up there so that every purpose you have for OBS stays super clean. For example, right now I'm in recording. If I want to go to podcast, it's going to bring me here, which is like a, an example podcast setup. So if I had a podcast that I had to run, it can allow me to just run it with just three main scenes, you know, guest, guest alone, me alone, and then me with the guest and then both. By the way, this was all made for a tutorial. So if you want to know how to do this podcast setup, uh, you can watch the full video. Now, one thing to understand is that the scene collection, when you switch it, is just going to switch the scene collection, right? The profile right here is basically the settings. It's going to remember basically uh, where to output the video, uh, the resolution and things like that. Meaning that you could have specific profile that matches specific scene collections. For example, my Instagram, uh, I created it because I was doing vertical live streams. So if I switch it here, hopefully it doesn't crash. <laughs> there you go. You're going to see that it's going to switch. Of course, the scene collection doesn't match it. But um, just to let you know that profile, what it does is remember exactly your settings. If you have docs, for example, on your Twitch scene collection, you're not going to have them in your recording. And it's actually going to remember that too. If I go to the Twitch, you're going to see that it's going to bring me my chat and my activity feed, which is, I think, broken right now because I don't know what Stream Elements is doing. Which actually brings us to the second tip that I want to give about the docs. Most people are going to be using them. See right there, you can add whatever. Uh, most people are going to use them for the chat and then the activity feed, but there's so much more that you could do about it. And I have one idea that I would like to share with you. Okay. First of all, you can have any website, any URL be a specific doc, meaning that anything here can be popped out. This is your creator dashboard on Twitch and your quick actions. If you want to run ads and things like that, you can do it straight in OBS. Maybe a lot of you know this, but for new people, this is an amazing tip, but stick around, stick around. So if I pop out this, Nice buttons like clip that or add marker are so important that you don't want to go and open up your browser. So what I'm going to do now is copy this URL, click copy. Let me close my activity feed for now because it's so useless. And I'm going to go to docs and I'm going to click on custom browser docs. And I'm going to call this one uh, Twitch buttons. OK, and I'm going to put the URL here, paste and then click apply, then close. So now when we go to docs, we should find a Twitch buttons all the way to the bottom click on it and it will open up. Now, since it's not taking information from your browser, it's going to ask you to log in again. So that might be annoying, but it don't matter. Put the password in. We got two factor authentication. And just like that, you have a doc just for your buttons and you can put it wherever you want. You want to put it in here. Okay. Maybe not. That's not the best spot up top. You can do that. Look at that. 
Ain't that beautiful? And it is responsive, so you can really, really play around with it and push its limits. Doesn't necessarily take that much more space. On the side like this, yeah, that's pretty nice. Boom, you wanna run an ad? Right there. Clip, mark something, all that, and all that. And you can put any URL. For example, let's say that you wanna customize like your overlay because you use Stream Elements. Since it's web-based, you could have like a page where you're on that overlay. And every time you save that overlay, it's gonna update. But that would be probably too much. But basically this brings you closer to the ease of use that people say that Streamlabs OBS has over OBS Studio. Well, you can customize OBS Studio to have everything that you actually need. And of course, more. Okay, the other idea I had is with this website called poll.ma.pe. It's basically a poll website that gives you pretty cool looking widgets. I know that Twitch has its own poll system that you can run directly from chat, but it's kind of awkward and you're gonna see why I would prefer this one, mostly for the visuals, not gonna lie. But basically, you can run a pretty interactive stream where you're constantly polling your audience. So basically you can type the question here and uh, and I'm gonna share the idea that I have. In this case, we'll say uh, you're playing Overwatch and you want to ask people, which hero should I pick? Who the heck is Vital? Is that Life Weaver? Do they call Life Weaver Vital in French? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Vital, oh, I mean, to be fair, it's easier to call Vital, Vital, Vital than Life Weaver, Life Weaver, or Weaver, or li I don't know what people call out. But you can see that we call Mercy Ange, which means Angel, and uh, Brigitte, and Baptiste. We don't pronounce the, the P. I don't know why they made him mispronounce his own name. Anyways, as you can see, I can put pretty much however many options that I actually want. And I put all of the support. Let's say that you're a support main who, ha who happens to stream Overwatch. There's a bunch of options, but I'm not gonna go through them. You can go on the website, but most importantly, you're gonna have those cool, pretty cool looking polls that you can put on your stream and they can be semi-transparent and everything. Would you look at that? There's one designed based on Overwatch. Cool, copy the URL. And I'm just gonna add it to my OBS while recording so you can see. Oh, of course, it's not gonna show unless I start the poll. Boom, play with the height. There we go. I'm gonna add a color correction filter and lower the opacity a little bit. So the advantage here is that chat doesn't have to necessarily click on something. People on mobile don't have to need like compatibility and be like, oh, I don't see the poll. I can't click on the poll, blah, blah, blah. It actually works by people typing the number of what they want to vote. Now, here's the thing. Every time you're in the lobby, in between matches and between games, you can basically ask your chat to put one, two, three, up to nine to basically vote on the next character you're gonna pick. You have a bunch of options and you can just finish the poll right before the match basically. And you can either have this only on your just chatting scene, meaning that if you go to your gameplay scene, well, they're not gonna see the poll anymore. Or you can just click hide poll from overlay in the meantime. Right? You have so many options. Subscriber votes can be worth more than others. Moderators, non-subs. You can set it for users to vote for multiple options, like the exact number of options that they have. You saw at the bottom, it would tell them unique votes and time active. You can decide to hide that from the overlay. And something so important is that you can translate the overlay text. So if you don't want those things to be shown in English, you can manually come in and type in what they mean in your language. Remember that you have all those options. I know that I run a bunch of giveaways pretty much all the time. And sometimes I ask chat exactly what they want me to give away. I also believe this would be like a very good way to engage your chat during the whole stream all the time. We don't really like to call out lurkers, but it's always good to keep your viewers engaged. Another thing I absolutely want you to start thinking about is really, really using, diving deep into the use of advanced bots like uh, StreamerBot or Adam. Uh, I haven't tried Adam yet, but I'm sure it does a bunch of, well, I've seen it do a bunch of stuff. I know I made a couple of tutorials. If you haven't seen them yet, please go watch them of, okay, channel points redeems and things like that. But there are so many things that you can, <laughs> that you can do that most YouTubers are not gonna talk about because it's maybe too advanced or there's so many possibilities that it's hard to find a good example. But if you use, for example, the integrations, just the integrations, if you use them correctly, there are are so many things that you can do where you can kind of bypass certain services that you're using to do those things. Like StreamerBot has the ability to really, really control your stream to the point where sometimes there aren't any services that will allow you to do those things, right? For example, there's an integration with Pulsoid. It's like a heart rate monitor widget for streamers, meaning that you can trigger some streamer bot stuff with your heart rate. You can make it so that streamer bot takes a clip automatically every time your heart rate goes above a certain threshold. That being said, 
Pulsoid already offers that service. But let's say that if you want everything to be under one roof, <laughs> under one window, you can also set that up. You can also set it up so that it records a backtrack with Atom Vertical. So instead of clipping on Twitch with a lower quality, you're gonna have the highest quality because you're recording directly from OBS. You can also set it up so it sends it directly to your Discord or something. I still don't know how to do that, but I know it's possible. I've seen people do it. Things like voice mod, for example. Voice mod has an extension that allows people to choose a voice and give bits and apply a voice changer for an amount of seconds, right? Which is great. Uh, it makes you money because people pay bits basically to activate it. But since you have a streamer bot integration with voice mod, you can also set that up so that it triggers it whenever you want. Maybe it's someone typing in chat. Maybe it's someone special typing in chat. When a specific VIP types in chat, boom, voice changer activates. And since voice mod is not just a voice changer, it also has a super huge soundboard. All of that can be set up and managed through StreamerBot. And that's just a couple of examples in the integration tab. There's voice control, there's hotkeys, of course. Under the platform, you can set up specific things for like the community goal, for example. Twitch has their own sub goal, right? If you want to have, I don't know, fireworks when you actually reach the goal or when the goal ends, you can also set that up. Anyways, those are just like tiny examples and you can already see the possibilities. But what I'm trying to say is that StreamerBot is great for channel point triggers and, and, and small little things like that that are basically alerts that people are mostly using it for, but it can you can automate the whole process of going live for it to do so many things that are super duper useful for you that are not necessarily just flashing things on the screen. But even if you do want to flash things on the screen, there are way more possibilities than you might think. If you've been using OBS Studio for a while now, you know that if you wanted to really, really separate your audio, you needed some external software. A lot of people use voice meter. Um, I know that the Elgato Wave uh, software allows you to split your audio, but right now there is a thing called application audio beta. And fun fact, you can split your audio in OBS, but that has nothing to do with what you're hearing. It has to do with what you want stream to hear. So the idea of, I want to listen to music, I don't want stream to hear it, that's how you could do it. You could have a sound input that is your game and then a sound input that is your music and you just mute the music for stream and then just let the game play, right? Discord, same thing. It also allows you to manage the volume. Well, I don't have anything playing right now as an example, so let me just put Discord. So what it does now, I have application audio and I have Discord here. I forgot to name it, but there it is. So if anything happens in Discord, it's gonna be there. The problem here is that we're also used to using desktop audio and and if anything goes through your speakers or through your headphones and your desktop audio is set up to that it's gonna go through so you would basically want to turn off desktop audio completely and then manage everything you want the stream to hear through application audio it's in beta uh, we're gonna see if it gets stable or not. I don't know if there's any issues. I don't really use it, but it's it's there and no one is talking about it. So technically, if you're using weird software that's always breaking and things like that, you can do this thing straight in OBS now. You don't need the extra software. For some people, they even bought gear, expensive gear, all, of course, all the time. <laughs> they even bought expensive gear just to do that. You can do it with software now. Oh yeah, I covered, I covered this plugin. There is a plug. Next tip is a plugin, waveform visualizer. But this is this is dedicated to one person because of one TikTok comment. So basically the plugin is waveform visualizer. I'm gonna pick my mic. Test, test, test. Okay, it's not picking it up. Test, test, test. Ta oh, there we go. Okay, so this is waveform visualizer, right? And um, I believe Jess made a TikTok where it was a compilation of her just screaming, just, <laughs> just playing video games and getting jump scared and screaming. <laughs> And uh, she had a heart rate monitor through Pulsoid. I'm, I'm guessing it's through Pulsoid. And I was like, wow, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And then she said that she also needs like a scream meter. So it's cool to have like waveform visualizer and things like that. You can have a circular one, radio layout. There it is. Test, test, test. Oh, it can be inside. You can also invert it. Ba 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 ba. Anyways, <laughs> since you can completely customize this, you could totally make a scream scream o meter or something like that. You can also change the colors and everything. Level meter, there it is, and just like that, you can maybe have like a little design around it. I haven't researched it that much, but I immediately thought of this plugin and how this can be used as a scream o meter. Basically, I believe the chat can definitely see when you're hitting like the highest peak. So there you go. Just for Jess, uh, this is how you would have a screen.
scream o meter <laughs> also if you have a compressor or a limiter on or both the results might be skewed oh testing wow wow <laughs> Okay, so last one is for, I still have this thing on. Last one is for people who use uh, Stream Decks, Elgato Stream Deck products. Let me put it on my normal Stream Deck. This might be more familiar. There you go, I get to show off cool buttons. If you have a Stream Deck and you use OBS and you haven't updated your buttons or, or what your Stream Deck can do for OBS, with OBS in a long time, there was an update not really recently, a couple months ago really, that gives you way, way more option, including things like controlling filters. Let me... I'm ruining this one. Anyway, <laughs> so you can turn filters on and off just from your Stream Deck. You can also take screenshots from your Stream Deck. You have media source control. So if you're playing something like a video intro for your stream, you can also control that with the Stream Deck. You have play, pause, stop, restart. And while the media is playing, you can show information on your Stream Deck. Let me, let me find an example. So we're gonna find like a, Okay, whatever. So, uh, media source, media source control, drop it here, pick the exact source you want. Which one is this? Just media source. So here with my stream deck, I can play stop, but I can also show the countdown. And as you can see, it's showing up, well, the count up. <laughs> it's showing up here and I can see it also on my stream deck plus. Am I controlling the right one? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm controlling the wrong one, but you get the point, you get the point. Of course, things like replay buffer, if you want to save clips directly, uh, you can do that. But of course, with the arrival of the Stream Deck Plus, there's also audio mixer. And if we combine that with uh, application audio capture beta, of course you can use the Wave application, but if you have knobs on any controller, let's say maybe a loop deck, and you don't wanna go through their software, you can still control your separate audio sources. Here as a button, let's see the options that we get. Let's say I wanted to control my mic, for example. You can toggle mute, push to mute, and then push to talk. That's nice. If I go on dials, under OBS, I'm gonna see volume mixer here. And now I can change the step size, basically how much decibels that I wanted to change per turn in a way per step and I can pick the source let's say it's my mic so I can adjust the volume by twisting it I can mute unmute by pressing on the knob I can also mute and unmute by pressing on the screen on the stream deck plus two thousand years later okay listen I was about to show you that you can set up specific key binds for activating and deactivating specific filters which is why I have a filter here and it seemed to not be the case on this OBS or I don't know if it's because I just added the filter now or something but I really thought that was like I was like oh this is a new thing in OBS and no one is talking about it we didn't used to be able to do that when it comes to the hotkey settings right we have way more options here but filters was one of them that I was really excited about I don't know if they removed it or if I dreamed about it <laughs> but here under okay this is me camera as a scene do I have me camera as a source though is it because it's a scene originally and there's no access to the filters what I swear I saw it. <laughs> I swear I saw that okay you know what people who use OBS the people who pay attention to those things let me know if there was a point in the hotkeys in the settings where you could turn on or turn off filters with hotkeys because I'm sure I've seen this but did they remove it or 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 am I wrong that was never a thing anyways I think this this is the part where we need to conclude the video I'm losing my mind and there it is sorry for the video being kind of all over the place I'm not necessarily feeling too well right now but I hope the video was useful for at least one of you. <laughs> if it was as usual, I'm gonna encourage you to type it in the comment section below. If you have any extra tips that I don't know about, uh, there's one that I just remembered, but that will be in another video, okay? So make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell, and also follow me on Twitch. And I will see you next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.